Hello and welcome to Red State the channel. In this video, we are going to talk about four CSS features that recently have been supported by all major browsers, which I believe could be very useful for web design and development. So, ready? Let's check it out. So first one is CSS Container Query. When working on responsive design, we usually familiar with media query in order to detect the screen size and adjust the layout accordingly. But what if we want to adjust the layout not based on the screen size but based on the container div instead? Container Query is the answer to this. You can set any element as a container using container name property and then detect the size using container query like this. When using container query, you can also specify the content size using container query units. For example, if you want a div to have a 30% width of the container, then set the width to 30 CQW. Container Query is recently supported by Firefox, Chrome, Edge, and Safari. Speaking of Media Query, there is recent CSS specification update that let you work with it a lot easier. Normally, if you wanted to take a viewport width between, let's say, 100 pixels and 1000 pixels, you would need to use a combination of both min width and max width, like this. But with the new range syntax, you can use a more readable code like this. The media queries range syntax is recently added support by Chrome, Edge, and Opera. Next one we are going to talk about is CSS Cascade Layers. I really like it and I believe it's going to be very useful. Let's suppose there is some situation that when you work on CSS and there are some conflict with the styling that cannot simply be fixed and end up force us to use important to override. With the cascade layer, you can easily work around this problem by creating layers of CSS rules. Let's take a look at this example. I intentionally set a wrong font size on higher specificity bracket. As you can see, we cannot override the font size property from the lower specificity bracket unless we use important. Now I'm going to use layers to fix this. First, I'll put the original bracket inside the layer name layer 1 and put the one we want to override inside layer name layer 2. As you can see, the CSS rules inside the most recent declared layer will precede the older one. Layers also have higher priority than the selector specificity. This gives developer a much easier way to control and organize the CSS rules. The cascade layers have been supported by all major browsers for about half a year. The last one is interesting. I believe most of us are familiar with the viewport units like VH and VW. They are very useful when you want to specify the size relative to the viewport. But when it comes to mobile, there are some consideration about the browser UI since some of them such as address bar can be expanded or hidden which also affects the viewport area. The problem is we don't know how default viewport units work with the browser UI state to prevent this confusion, there are new CSS viewport units. First is small viewport unit, starts with SV prefix. The small viewport means the area of viewport when all the expandable UI are expanded. A safe option to use to make sure that all content will not be obscured by browser UI. Second one is large viewport, starts with LV prefix. The large viewport means the largest possible area of viewport when all browser UI are hidden. And the last one is dynamic viewport, starts with DV prefix. The dynamic viewport is the current viewport size based on current browser's UI state, which means the value is changed in real time. These new units are recently supported by all major browsers and might be very useful, especially for mobile website. And that's all for this episode, I think all of them are very interesting and I'll definitely make a follow up tutorial for each of them soon. So like or subscribe to stay tuned for the next update. Thanks for watching, see you next time, bye!